manages to get the job done. Here comes Tadpole now through the air. Let's see if he can set up a teammate or get it in by himself. No wow. way. Look for the dunk in the air. Justin coming off the ceiling, falls down. Look at the flip. Woo! Oh, 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 oh. What's going on, Rocketeers, and welcome to Esports in 30. I'm Brody. That's Nick. And today, we're seriously not going to waste any time because the playoffs of the RLCS has given us so much to talk about. Isn't that what we're doing right now? Wasting time doing this intro? Let's talk about the playoffs, man. Let's go. Good point. All righty, Nick. As we said, we're not going to waste any time. On the other side of these highlights, we'll be calling up Adam Lawler Thornton to get all the details. Good night. Playing. And left was right there, ready to bang it home. Maybe they catch memory too far oh, forward. It's in! It's in! AJ scores and Rogue move on to qualification. Ghost is done for the season, but a valiant performance for their last match. What a battle between these guys. On, but now a chance. It was a good stop by Torment to at least slow things down, but they're not over. A and B through ties the game oh, for oh. Space Station. Nothing this time. Gimmick. Back over, finds Torment from the corner, and it finds the gap! Torment scores! Right, the clear game is going to be the most important part for Rogue. Krenovi did a great job getting a lot oh of the off the wall, oh an air dribble gosh. for him, and that's punched into the net. All right. Oh. Space Station starts to rally. It's going to be a long climb, but this is the beginning they need. AXP, though, gets beat, and it's in from Krenovi. What? low goal participation. But he has stepped up for G2 when they're needed. And oh, Rizzo breaks it up. Chicago quickly can't beat Torment to the ball. Now back. Oh, give it. He scores. Cloud nine. He's going to collect the boost and return back to his own half. Is NRG threatened? Oh, it's Garrett. And Justin now on the catch. This one around the goal with a bump, but he caught the ball a second time. If he didn't hit it, it was for sure going to be in. Fireburner was lurking, but a second opportunity is there. Yes! Tries to chase Torment. Looks for the dunk in the air. Justin coming off the ceiling, falls down. Still got the flip. Justin finds the third goal. And here's a look at your final bracket for the NARLCS Regional Playoffs. NRG sweep their way to a well-deserved title while Rogue took the long way into land. And joining us now to break down all that insane action is none other than Lawler. What's up, dude? How's it going, you guys? Fantastic. Yeah, good to have you back. Just like NRG are. Can't NRG get rid of me, man. Also back to back as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Lawler, why is NRG so good? Because uh, everyone else is trash. No. <laughs> um, no. Uh, NRG is like the best defense we've ever seen matched with super high level consistency. Um, they do no wrong. Simply put, like they don't mess up, and that's hard to come by. And it's paired with two mechanically gifted gods and Justin and Garrett. And then you've got a support system and Fireburner that doesn't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. When he does, they're extremely glaring, but it's like less than dime a dozen. Like it just doesn't happen. So yeah, they're really good. Like really, really good. And I mean, as, as a guy, I, you know, I'm still, I'm still kind of yeah. picking up on some of these, the Celtics, and you said their, their defense is incredible. And I think it was really highlighted by that ridiculous overtime that they played yeah. in, I believe it was a game three against Cloud9, where it felt like they were surviving like seven plus minutes of overtime pressure and Cloud9 was just starving them out and they still kept getting it. I mean, at this point, you got to feel like this title, this world, um, regional title was deserved and maybe they're on the way to a, a, what would be a well-deserved world's title. Yeah, I talked. So I was um, last night. I was actually hanging out with uh, their coach, Chrome. Mm -hmm. He talked about like it was the perfect way to cap off a well-deserved season. And I hate the term "deserved" because I don't think anything is deserved. It's earned, and they've put in the work to get to this point. Um, but they're really happy with where they've come. They have focused a lot on putting emphasis on playing their play style. There's a lot of time when teams either get down on something or they start to lose or it starts to trend the other way. And you see that even with energy where there'll be times where the other team scores, but they still hold on. They still play exactly how they want to play. And then they close out the series in a dominating fashion. And there's a lot of teams that don't where as soon as things start to go away from them, they change up. They play a little bit more passive or they play too aggressive. And energy just hasn't done that. They're just playing the way they want to play and it's clearly working. So um, really happy for them. And I know they're really excited about where they're at as a team and they're treating DreamHack Dallas as literally a, a practice for, for RLCS because at the end of the day, they don't care. 
Yeah. It's ROCS or nothing. So that, that was that's a, it's a good point because you know talking to Chrome a while ago myself, uh, he had mentioned that you know they and uh, with Garrett too that they were actually trying a different play style and we saw that last Worlds and we saw how well that went right. So I think it, it makes yeah. sense that they're just like okay you know what, you guys know what to do on the field. How about you just go ahead and do it. Um, yeah. and, it, and it looks to be working. But uh, another team that uh, tends to do what they want on the field, um, it, sometimes it doesn't work out, is C9. Um, and then, of course, uh, alongside G2, the other big three. Yeah. Um, these guys are just consistently at the top, and I'm, I'm not sure how they just keep doing it. I mean, no offense to North America, I think it's pretty easy to stay at that top in okay. the sense of you know, the competition coming in, I think, is having an issue with a lot of these roster changes. Um, I think we're all surprised the fact that Rogue is a top four. I don't think any of us expected that to be, but it also shows the the difficulty of what it is to maintain a top four. So credit where it's due, both to G2, Cloud9, and Energy staying at the top for so long. Um, I think the biggest roster change in history was this season, and the fact that G2 ended up with Chicago, and they're continuously showing their potential. Um, I don't think we've seen peak Cloud9 yet, or peak G2 yet, but as for Cloud9, I think something's got to give. I think we're seeing, not to the extent of Dignitas, but there's a, a feeling of complacency. Um, they've been dominant since they came in in Season 4 when they were the Muffin Men and won DreamHack and then became Cloud9 and that old story, but I don't think we've seen them really give it their all in a while, and it's showing. Like they're not as dominant as they once were because I feel they've become a little stagnant in their decisions. The fact that they aren't willing to take a coach and the fact that they don't take scrims as seriously as other teams, I think is finally catching up to them. So um, I don't think they can just rely on really crazy good mechanics anymore. I think they actually have to put in some real effort. So um, that's why I think we haven't seen them as dominant as once before, but at the same time, they're still just that good so they can skate by. So. And maybe they are practicing a lot. I don't know. But from what I've seen and heard and whatever, I just, I think they could do better if they put in the effort. G gimmick even mentioned at one point, I'm like, what do you do to prep? And I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> it, it felt like maybe Cloud9 was like, they're just, they're just, as you said, they're going through by kind of like brute force, right? They're just using their skill and, and maybe not necessarily as much as their brains, which yeah. we use, maybe that, because it seemed to me like this playoffs are more than ever kind of really highlight that there, there is a pretty clear number one, number two, number three, with all the sweeps especially, yep. like, you know, yeah. Cloud9 swept G2 and then got swept by NRG. Do you think that, that this really solidified kind of that idea? Um, yes and no, because if you look at any of the series, sweeps does not tell the story. The match between Cloud9 and G2 was relatively close. Same thing with energy and Cloud9. Like, we had an 11 minute and 12 second overtime. Yeah. Like, there's no way that match wasn't close. Like, the fact that they battled for that long and then the last game they just gave up. Like, they had an 11 minute, 12 second overtime, so you're playing essentially three plus games in one game. You lose that, you're now demoralized, and then the game starts for the na the last game for G2, or for Cloud9 Energy, they get scored within five seconds of the kickoff. So you just lost three games technically, and then you're immediately scored on again. Cloud9 gave up before the game even started. Like, mm -hmm. so, they gave it the ball, and it was a close series. It was a really close series. So I think Cloud9 still has it in them. It's just a little bit of a wake-up call. You know, uh, I want to I want to talk about a bit of a um, a miracle run. It seems they had to go through this team first, though SSG, and then we'll focus yeah. on, of course, Rogue uh, and their run. But SSG, you know, we even heard it from Gimmick yet again. I asked them, and I said, is, "Who is SSG making it in?" And his one single word was definitely. Like, Gimmick himself thought they were, and I'm wondering why they didn't. They got two uh, 04s uh, against uh, Rogue and, and Cloud9, and they're, they're out. They keep it close against C9, but then get stomped by Rogue. What's going on with them? Yeah, I, I think a lot of us felt that if they didn't take the victory in the top half, they weren't going to make it. Um, there's something about a lot of these younger teams that come in that if they don't do things their way initially, they have a hard time bouncing back. Um, you see it historically through Rocket League where a lot of these newer teams where if they don't solidify their play style or they don't come in with a very headstrong mentality and super positive, they just can't seem to hold on. And it's more of an experience thing. I think that's why Kronobi moving to Rogue was such a positive thing because yes, they are a brand new team. For those that don't remember, it was previously FlyQuest that got picked up. Um, and dropped Prime Thunder with Kronovi moving in. So 
the fact that this veteran status has seen everything ups and downs he's been through it all he's been a world champion but he's also been at bottom of the barrel of g2 for numerous seasons so having that veteran status shows a lot in what it can do mentality wise for a team like rogue and i think that was their benefit like they came in they played their game and they realized like okay it's not over yet we still have to stay pretty level-headed until things start going our way and for space station like they got swept by cloud nine and then they drop down so for them it's it's not an easy situation to be a part of to bounce back from that even though you have a series to kind of get over it um but it's difficult to assert yourself when something you've been doing all season just flat out doesn't work um it's not easy to get over so mm -hmm. shooting accuracy has always been an issue for space station you saw a little bit of that but when there's a ton of pressure on the line and it's like yo you have to win this series to go to land that's not an easy thing to kill for nerves yeah, yeah. And you, you did mention on Kronovi's impact on Rogue, and I do want to touch on them because seriously impressive performance by yeah. them. They beat Ghost 4-2, then they swept uh, SSG to make it all the way to LAN. Kronovi was playing like a man who really, really, really wanted to go to LAN. Uh, one of the things that I, potentially was nice a big nice. factor for them was the defense. There was actually, uh, of their 14 games they played, there was eight of them, even against NRG, where they only allowed one or less goals. How do you think that that played a big uh, factor in them being able to punch their ticket to LAN? Oh, definitely, definitely. When you can keep a team to that minimal amount, it just basically shows that for the rest of the game, you always have a chance. Even when the clock is done, you still have a chance to score and tie it up. So that kind of concept is a way to revitalize the team at any moment, like just knowing that it's never technically over. And yeah, even though you're down by two or three at some points, like you're still technically not over because with Rocket League, like a crazy pinch can happen and it can go in. But Knowing that it's within one just, it does something to a team's mindset that enables them for success. Just because like, knowing it's right there, like all we have to do is put one away is just enough to get, especially like younger teams, even though Wonder's not a young guy by any means. Um, Still less experience though. Yeah, it's just, it, they're new to it. So I think that's great. I think Kenobi and the rest of the squad did a great job in, in that aspect. Um, and another team that definitely has been trying to find their I guess they're calling of what they want to be. Um, Kenobi, I think, has played the best season he's played in a long time. Uh, he started to redefine the support role probably a season ago. Mm -hmm. And then this season, I think, was the best he's looked in a really long time. He's single-handedly, I think, been the sole... Like, he's, he's the sole reason why Rogue is where they are right now. Um, it just took some time for the other two to find where they wanted to be. And shout-outs to AJ. AJ's playing like a madman. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he's really hit some pretty nutty angles. He's hit flip resets. He's just relieving some of that pressure finally. I think Kronovi should be a striker. It's where he got his start. It's where I think he feels most comfortable. And if Wonder can support that, awesome. You got a you know, double-headed monster that's trying to score some goals. So. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, Ghost went home, so we're not going to talk about them. Uh, and you know uh, North America is only half the picture right now uh, for our discussion, so we got to hit Europe next. Let's take a quick breather before jumping in it by checking out these highlights. It scared the entire TSM defense, but now on the other end, Aigne with a wide open net. He oh! couldn't do it. Oh, it's blocked again. Aigne can't get back to it. No goal for TSM. Dignitas, get away with it. A shot, blocked, scored, Violet Panda. And it really has just been so back and forth. Pass off the ceiling. Repco, does he have the touch? I ignite off the backboard. Metzenoris comes in. It's too late. Turbo Pulsa and Violet Panda have the clear. And the follow up from Yukio. One, two, Three, score, Dignitas! Nice and high, but Tapple's already up, playing towards the backboard. No one's home, if he can just double What a time! But again, the challenge game, Cassio, a big win, and another one from Triple Trouble, the dangerous, and in! Oh, shot, shot set stays with it. Moves it out, back to midfield. And back, back in the day when we used to have teams... Oh, shot set! Oh! Shot set does it himself! Doing a little better in the boost department. Shaw set picks it up. He's got another beat. Shaw set! Evisceration! On top of each other, but Bluey still manages to get the job done. Here comes Tadpole now through the air. Let's see if he can set up a teammate or get it in by himself. No wow. way. But the shot from Tadpole is not good. No ad for Alpha down the field. Bluey on the flank. Alpha does it by himself. <laughs> the MVP. Up against Fruity on the other end. He's got half a tank of boost, and he's going to try and keep it in the air. Get it over the top. Gets there, the ball yep. on himself. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Barcelona's goaltending has kept them alive in game number six. Alpha, it's not the best touch. The demo opens, and then Kane strikes, and Vitality are your re European 
champion, regional champion. The EU RLCS playoffs are over in Vitality. Are your kings? Triple Trouble shocked everyone by qualifying for land, while Dignitas was so close yet so far. Now, Lawler, I thought watching some of those highlights uh, would have let me catch my breath, but uh, Europe was nuts, man, and stressful, and I'm sure you're feeling the same. It's Europe, man. <laughs> stressful, and we have no idea what's going to happen, except for this time we finally got the results right, I feel. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit more predictable on this side. The big notable one that I want to give uh, a shout-out to is PSG. PSG is looking mm. like a land team. Uh, they're ready to go, and it's really exciting to see because... I've always been a big fan of those guys. I think Farah is a super underrated player still. It's just we haven't seen him play at this level. So, uh, shout out to PSG, keeping it close against everybody and almost taking the victory. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll talk about it in a sec. We have to, we have to of course, talk about um, some teams that didn't make it. Um, TSM, I, I really can't figure out what's going on, man. Like, I'm, I'm mind blown. Last time Lolly was here, he, we were trying to figure it out. You weren't necessarily sure, and they did, in fact. Achieves couldn't as, figure it out as, either. As predicted, you know, they went all the way from top two to now all the way out of land. So what do you think the future, where does this team go from here? Yeah, fall from grace for sure from TSM, which is super disheartening. Uh, they get their E-League victory, get picked up by TSM, and then they just haven't been able to maintain it. Um, a lot of it, I think, has to do with this old guard type thing. I talked about this yesterday when I was hanging with Chrome and those guys. Because uh, someone asked, like, yo, what's going on with TSM for the same reason? And the way I expressed it is someone needs to step up. Um, and when they do, the others need to help that. Mm -hmm. We've seen numerous times Metzenaris try to assert himself as that, that focal point. And then when he does, like, you just don't get the extra assistance. Like, in today's day in Rocket League, you have to have at least two players performing really well, I feel. And it just hasn't, they haven't clicked on that on that line. A lot of it, I think, does have to do with Remco, where we're used to him being this solidified third, this guy who just does no wrong. And in moments when they lack, he was always the one to step up. He was always the one to move forward and take the shots. Or he was the one to slow down the pace on the back end to make sure that they had time to kind of reassert themselves. And it just hasn't happened. Um, he's been very, very lackluster, I think, this season, which you is know, weird because normally he's just, he's so consistent. I don't it know. just hasn't happened. I, I'm, I'm throwing my, my weight over to iIgnite right now. I'm like, we've heard him talk about it before in the past. And, and don't get me wrong, I, I love him. I would love to see him at LAN. He's great to hang out with. But um, I really don't know how much longer he's going to last at this level. He mentioned it himself, you know, about half a year ago that even he was having trouble keeping up with the pace and speed. And I feel like if he can keep up with the speed, he's the offense that team just doesn't have goals. Yeah, it's it's been weird because there's moments where Remco looks great and there's moments when Ignite looks great. And I, I know Ignite has it in him. We've seen it. There's nothing in my mind that says that Ignite is not capable as RLCS top tier. Like, he's a damn good player. It's just I need to see those shots consistently. It's what separates him from the players like Garrett where they, no matter where they're on the field, they're going to make a correct touch. And when they do get a shot, it is with power on target. And that's been Ignite's issue because when he's on, like everything's barred down in it. Like it's mm -hmm. disgusting what he can do. And it doesn't matter what angle he's hitting it from. It's just, where's that level of consistency? And I don't know what it is. I don't know if Jake is hurting them or helping them. Their new coach from mm -hmm. OC that used to play for uh, Chiefs. I don't know what he's doing. I and I don't mean like in the sense of negative, but it's just what like, are you doing? like what are what are you doing coaching wise that is helping hurting like what are what kind of things are you attempting to help these guys yeah. out with? So I just simply haven't heard from him. I have no idea what he's attempting to do with TSM. Um, and not to put the blame on him by any means. Um, but something's got to give from those guys. I don't know if they just need to change mm -hmm. what they're doing, but I think it starts with the basics. Go back to the basics. Clearly you guys did well. You qualified for Dallas through through winners like mm -hmm. you guys dominated for so take that go look and see what you did there and try to re recapture that um now hold up nick yes i'm looking around here um and i don't see dignitas not where are they what Ooh. happened where'd they go eliminated why unfortunately what happened I mean, I felt like Violent Panther, much like Kronovi for Rogue, was a man who wanted to go to land badly. But you came back and you were like, man, is, is Turbo the weakest player on Dignitas right now? Uh, Lawler, what was your evaluation of, of Turbo, Violent, the, the whole Dignitas situation? Yeah. Too little, too late? What the, what the heck, dude? Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, it's crazy the amount of respect that team gets because of who they are. Mm -hmm. Like, even yeah. during the entire tournament when we were there, it was just like, yo, I don't want to play Dig. I just don't want to do it. Despite their abysmal season 
everybody's still like, yo, we do not want to go up against them. And it's because of what they can do and their potential. We know it's possible. Um, I think Dig has definitely fallen into a place of complacency. Um, I honestly believe that with them winning DreamHack Leipzig was a bad thing because they come into this off season, they don't do too well at WSOE. They're like, okay, we got to put in some effort. Things are going good. We win DreamHack. Oh yeah, we're fine. Like we can skate by, no big deal. And then all of a sudden they're bottom three in league play. And we're like, okay, are they going to make it? And they barely scrape by. They get mm -hmm. into the team house. They're starting to do well again, but when you leave it up to chance like that, like that's not the Dignitas way. So um, I think it's a big wake up call. I think these guys realize like, yo, teams are getting good. Like we've got some really competitive. No. Okay. <laughs> no, come on. Simply that we'll see them yeah, next season. Are you kidding me? Are you <laughs> kidding me? No. I didn't believe it. I just, I just wanted to get it out there. But we ain't gonna see that. Um, I, I mean, I think they'll be fairly safe into the next one. The, one of the question marks I've had, though, uh, and it's one of the teams going to land, is Triple Trouble. Now, I'm still not certain if, you know, maybe we've seen their peak. This, you seem excited. You're Dude, I was, I, I, I've been, I, I, when the teams was on the show for the last couple weeks, I was like, man, I really want Triple Trouble, playoff team, yay, nay. You know, now land team, yes, no. And everyone was saying no, no, no. And then watching that video, of Tadpole's house and the whole mm. place is going nuts and yeah. they're they're popping off. I mean, it was absolutely a fantastic story. And I mean, maybe, you know, it's, we were saying TikTok's getting complacent. Maybe everybody was getting complacent on Triple Trouble, right? Because they came in, they beat an incredibly impressive team in PSG. Yeah. Lol, or Triple Trouble, I mean, they're heading into land now. Talk to us about this journey that they've taken this year. Yeah, for them, it's, it's pretty crazy to get promoted. So they've obviously made history. They're not the only ones. Technically, Barcelona, I know I gave you crap for it last time, Nick, but... <laughs> Technically, Barcelona's well-made history uh, in the sense that they auto-qualify, but it was the first time that we've seen a rival series team promote with all new players, all new faces, and then also come in and solidify a place at land through qualifying, not just through an auto-bid. So, mm -hmm. obviously, history in their own sense. But, yeah, man, it's scary what a team that has nothing to lose can do. Uh, <laughs> can do. They're a team that all expectations were the complete opposite Everybody expected them to be probably bottom four of the, of the standings. And for them to come in, like, that's scary. When you come in and you're literally only going to gain experience, you're only going to improve, it, sky's the limit. So yeah. they look good, man. They look really good. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned it very briefly last time I was here that they have potential to be a top two team in Europe. And I still stand by that. I think the potential is definitely there. I don't okay. think we've seen peak. Um, as these guys get more comfortable, as they obtain more experience against the top level, we've seen what those players can do. And when they've got a support system behind them that's going crazy when they qualify, like that's that's they're, things for success. They're like, going to they, have to got... fight two other teams, though, for be that top two spot. I mean, like, I really think PSG and, and FCB, those are two teams that are going to be which really Which is pretty cool, by the way, to say, you know, FCB and, and PSG. In Rocket League, yeah. really cool to see. But um, yeah. though, between those two, like we've seen a PSG now on the rise. These guys are stepping up. They're they're mm -hmm. starting to crush it. But we've seen Barcelona be able to step on them as well. Who's kind of fighting? Do you like who do you put in that second spot right now? Is it Barcelona, um, or do you think PSG has every right to take that spot? Without a doubt, it's Barcelona. Okay. Um, track record between the two of them, especially if you go head to head, it's always in Barcelona's favor. Uh, mm -hmm. PSG has a really hard time against that matchup. Always have. Um, but Barcelona, just the potential of that team at any given moment is just disgusting. Um, it's literally three guys all mechanically gifted that can do whatever they want, whenever they want. And as long as the other two don't trip up and don't get in their way, they're great. Alpha's shown his consistency and uh, can support whatever they need. So, yeah, Barcelona, like, out of all the teams that have a chance of winning land, Barcelona is my third most likely right now. Mm. Now, uh, I don't, I don't think we have time to, to talk about yeah. vitality, but I just want you to give me your thoughts, both of you. Actually, Nick, yeah. you first. Cl cl Ener closing thoughts. Well, energy or vitality. Ooh, I, I think that despite the fact that Vitality was pressured a lot more by the what we'd say arguably are the better European teams, mm -hmm. it felt like their win was a lot harder to get than NRG's was oh, in terms okay. of the number of games and how hard they had to work for it. I still like NRG a lot, though. Okay. Lawler? Um, right now, Who's NRG. Yeah. Like, right now, if, if you're playing a series between, Barcel or between Vitality and NRG, NRG wins it. Um, which I think favors this new format we have at World Championships. The fact that it is a single limb bracket, there is no extra life on the final day. So um, 
but also four of our six land winners have come from the lower bracket. So, who I don't knows? Know, man. I I, uh, I agree though. I I give NRG the upper hand, but we're all stupid North Americans. What do we know, right? <laughs> Anyways, well, we're out of town. We gotta let you go. So uh, thanks so much for joining in with us, and I'll see you soon for the promo relegation. Love you guys. Always a pleasure having. All right, dude, we have just a few minutes left, but of course, I think we need to touch on the other regions in the RLCS right now. We have OCE and South America. Um, from South America, we already uh, got our representatives. Yeah, it's nice. We've got, uh, 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 interestingly, the number one seed from the regular season, mm -hmm. Erodium, did not make it. So we've got Low Key and INTZ Esports yeah. uh, representing South America. Now, I will personally admit, I actually, this is a new region, I think, for a lot of Brand people, new. and uh, for myself included. And I don't know really that much about these players, but I'm excited to see... Nobody does. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it's, I'm excited to see these players at LAN. I think this is an awesome opportunity for the region, um, yeah. and I'm sure you're going to have a great time meeting them and yeah. interact with them on stage. And there's, there's a lot to learn, I think, not just about their region and the way they play the game, but how they're going to interact with other regions as well. Well, dude, to, to me, it's like the more friends, the better. I mean, I love yeah. meeting all the the Rocket League players at LAN. It's so fun to just uh, hang out. Like, LAN is so sick. Also, make sure you're at LAN. I want to meet everybody. Um, but no, it, it's sick that we have a new region coming in. I honestly think they're going to get trounced. Um, like, I don't think it's like going to come close. the first couple yeah, years. Yeah, but the thing is, like, it's the inevitability. Like, totally. um, they have to have that. And then what you do, though, as long as you go in knowing, we'll do our best, but we're likely not going to make it far walk away with that experience, the knowledge, and say, okay, we learned this from these teams that we just played, and we can bring this back to our own region now, and we can make our region just totally. ultimately better. So, and I mean, I hope that also they get a chance to scrim some of their teams as well. Like, I'm hoping yeah. that your NRGs and your Vitalities, you know, don't, aren't just like, oh, you guys are from South America, we're not going <laughs> to scrim you guys, but like, they're actually interested in kind of getting yeah. them worked into the system and seeing how they play, because they, be, they might be in their group. Or... That's the thing, people in their groups are probably going to exactly. have some scrims with them. Yeah. I don't see why not. Um, but another team, uh, or sorry, another region, OCE, these yeah. guys, uh, these guys have a bit of shakeup recently. Big like, shakeup. Well, like Jake and Torsos leaving the gone. region for uh, TSM and EG, respectively. Mm -hmm. That was off Chiefs, obviously the best team. And uh, there the was a whole team that kind waves. of that kind of led to a whole uh, like spiraling effect of like you know he left, so he joined this team and yeah, he joined yeah, that yeah. team, and they moved a whole bunch of people around, and the so sponsors came, and mm -hmm. some sponsors left. So that isn't out actually locked in yet, but it will be yeah. this coming weekend. Yeah, our top contender is probably looking like um, Renegades, of course. Um, that's uh, Torsos, one, the last remaining Chief player. Yeah. And then they got Kami on. Kami, and I've heard Yumi Chi's been talking about Kami. Like, Kami is apparent. He's like, he's greater than Drippe, is wow. what he's saying. Oh my I don't goodness. know if I believe that, Yumi. I, don't I mean, know, I think but... I think we saw the potential of Kami in yeah, past yeah, seasons, yeah, yeah. and now that the door was open for kind of that best player in O's yeah, yeah, yeah. position to be available, maybe stepping into that role. Um, but I, I like I like the way that the Renegades look right now, mm -hmm. um, and the other team obviously, Icon. yeah, Icon. So the, if, for those that aren't familiar, that's kind of like a mashup of like Tainted Mind slash Dark Sided players, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We, well, we have CJCJ, which we know everybody loves CJCJ. I mean, we <laughs> at the very least we want CJCJ at land just for antics, just for the entrance, <laughs> just for right. the entrance. Doesn't matter how well they play. Yeah, he had oh his, his car um, walking. The was car was walking. Legendary. Yeah, dude. yeah. Legendary. And then of course you have um, CJCJ and. Uh, Sorry, sorry, Shady and Express alongside CJCJ. Yeah. And these are guys that have been in the scene for so long in OCE, like yeah. way back, like since yeah. past season one, I was playing with these guys online, talking to these guys online. Mm -hmm. Like these guys have always been really, really good players. Yeah. So they, that's not they to have say, experience. That's not to say that like, for example, Out of Order can't do an upset, but I think going into the, the top mm -hmm. four here, the playoff bracket for OCE, I think it's pretty safe to say that those are the two teams that we're expecting to see the hard Jersey. thing, though, is for those teams, yeah, we can get, they can get there, but the things, once they're there, you're looking at uh, an incredibly strong NA and mm -hmm. EU top end right now, and you you guys just went through a huge shakeup in yeah, your region. I think it's going to take some time for these rosters to yeah. settle, and, you know, the Chiefs were together for a while, yeah. and they just barely started kind of keeping up with these NA EU teams, mm -hmm. so... We're going to have to see how they have, but I, I agree with you. I think that OS is going to have a rough ride. Yeah, uh, either way, around. it's going to be exciting to watch, so you guys better tune in. That'll be June 21st to 23rd, uh, and that's coming up fast. But that's it for today. Shout out to Lawler for calling in today. Just a reminder that next Thursday show is not Rocket League because Nick and Marissa will be taking you through the insane world of Dota 2 and the MDL Disneyland Major. Tomorrow, though, we're back with another show for FPS Friday to close out the week. Till then, check out our socials at Squad State, and we'll see you soon.